we've we've talked about thus far how we how you've gotten to where you are today without really focusing on the art itself. So I want to kind of talk about that a little bit. You're classified as an abstract impressionist, okay? And to a lot of people that could mean some different things. Well, let's talk about this beautiful painting as an example. It's right behind us. It's five feet by at least 12 feet. It's not anything anybody could put in their car to take home if they decide to purchase it. So, and vibrant colors and, and just the, the visions that you have. Why did you choose to, to do your art on such a big canvas with the colors that you use, and can you give us a little background into your thinking behind that style? That's a very good question. You bring me back in my youth. <laughs> you know, it's a very good question. Well, it's written down here on my cheek. <laughs> <laughs> because when I was talking about my my book drawing, and it was always small, I think that was the beginning where I uh, put in my mind that I needed big canvases. I never did. Only a small canvas that I did was a portrait of John Kennedy. Uh, soon I come in this country, I start big canvas. And uh, I have canvases like 12 feet, 14, 16, even to 24 feet. I can do it. I mean, if somebody needed that. Sure. sure. That. And uh, everything comes from uh, when I was young, because nature is huge, mm -hmm. and I try to put all that in, in there, you know, because sitting by the by the river or lake and looking at the nature, it's, uh, nature is so quiet, but full of life. Right. You Changes know? constantly. Constantly, yeah. Right. And when you look at my paintings, you know, somebody would look at it and say, what is that, you know? But my paintings are full of life too, mm -hmm. because they are nature. Right. Let's talk about that a little bit. Your your paintings can be inspiring. Uh, they can have different emotions from different people. Now you've related at some time that people have come up to you and told you some of the most unbelievable reactions that they've had to, you know, your paintings. Can you share with our, our viewing audience just one of those that stands out in your mind as being significant for you? Yes, it's, uh, this story is very emotional. That night on the floor, my wife introduced me to the woman, middle age, you know, and uh, she said to me, Julie, everybody is talking about feeling some energy from your paintings. I hope you painting and the energy from you painting heal my breast cancer, you know. And I was looking now at her. I was, I didn't know it was a, a joke or was a, it was true. It was true, but I I saw her eyes was full of tears, you know, and I really get emotional. And I told my wife, listen, I have to get out for a minute. Uh, talk to her and uh, take her phone and address. Mm -hmm. And uh, after I come back, you know, she was still there. We talked with the phone and uh, mm -hmm. she left. I come home and I was talking about this with my wife. And I went in my studio. I made a painting, 3 by 10 and I took a painting to her home. Wow. Without she knowing, because my wife just called and asked, how are you doing and everything, and uh, she find out that she's home. And I bring the painting in home. I never saw in front of me anybody crying more. She made me emotional too. To tell you the truth, I I have in my eyes full of tears too in my life. And I hang the painting for her and walk and everything. And uh, we left and since then, you know, we are in a contact once in a while with her. And it was it was a very 
and one way sad story but happy story. I know. I, I, I believe that the whole story is nothing but a positive story because as you're relaying that the story, I'm sitting here thinking about what it must be like as an artist that something you've created from your mind, your your energy is on that canvas. And what I'm getting goosebumps <laughs> just thinking about this it must be like a soccer player scoring a goal to win the game because yes you're going to get responses people are going to react to your painting but to a level like like you just shared that's got to be like the ultimate feeling for an artist who puts their work out there that is cannot cannot go higher yeah. and that was that was tough for me i think i, I think never experienced something like that i think the word we're looking for here is priceless it's, it is, yeah. it's, it's just something that, you know, experience, maybe this is, this was the first time and the last time that you experienced this, you know. It would appear to me that you have, you have gone almost full circle with your art, from your home country to New York to Las Vegas, but now you've reached a pinnacle to a certain extent. What would be? What do you think it would be like to bring you and your art back home? That would be a very big thing. Is that something that you hope to do or every, plan to do? Every artist would love to have an exhibition in this country, but before I do that, I do need invitation from my country. And when I'm talking about my country, I uh, talk about Albania and Kosovo because it's a one people. So, you know, if I'm invited, I'll be there. And I'm waiting for the invitation. You know. Well, if you get that invitation, just know Phillips and Cash will be there to broadcast it on the internet for you. Uh, let's talk about some of the things that we, we touched on it a few seconds ago. You had this, you really your first exhibit here in Vegas, uh, back in March uh, at the Artistic Lifestyles um, Gallery down, uh, down more in the center of town from where we are today. What was that experience like for you, really the first exhibit that you've done here? Uh, what kind of responses did you get, other than the story of, of that lady that you just shared, but what was the overall experience for you at the uh, opening back in March? It was, it was a big experience. and. Uh... It was more than I expected, you know. Uh, Sandy Castell and uh, Mike uh, Leonetti mm -hmm. put all this uh, together. And uh, also Danny, Danny Titus with his uh, foundation, uh, Lifelong uh, Dream. Mm -hmm. So somehow everything clicked together that night. And uh, it was good, it came out very good, you know. Planning on another one in the near future? Well, absolutely. So, of course, I'm planning some uh, other exhibition, yes. It's my, it's my understanding, though, that one of your dreams and goals here in Las Vegas is to create your own art studio. How, how is that process going along? Yes, I, I, I need a gallery. That is, that is must. Mm -hmm. I want to have an exhibition in my gallery, and I want to fix the gallery my way. Mm -hmm. Because till now, for this eight year, I visit every gallery in, in Las Vegas. It's very hard to find the gallery for my paintings mm -hmm. because they are too small. Right. Matter of fact, when I was looking for the for the gallery downtown, and then I asked the artists, you know, is it any big gallery? Mm -hmm. No. And they asked me, how, how big as uh, big are your paintings? One of the things, Ricky, that that drew our attention to Jolie, not only he's a great guy and he does great work, but he does a lot of things along the lines of what we do, and that's giving back to the community. And one of the things that Jolie has gotten into is working with the foundation, who is owned by whom? Who's the foundation, Lifelong Dreams? Who's behind it? Uh, behind this foundation is uh, Danny Titus. Okay, so I wanted, I didn't want to get the name wrong, so I want to make sure we give credit where credit is due. But Jolie has gotten involved with this foundation, Lifelong Dreams, which really is the, a starting point of getting the arts back into the community because what has happened with Jolie's art and this foundation Lifelong Dreams is they're creating scholarships for special needs students here in the Clark County School District cash to specifically help those students 
express themselves through the arts and getting the arts back into the school programs. That's a great foundation for what Jolie was talking about for what's going to be a short-term goal of getting arts into this community. There's no question about it. Our school system, uh, unfortunately, is lacking those type of programs. And through this foundation and through Jolie's contribution, I can see nothing but success coming out of that. Absolutely. And, and it's really going to set a groundwork for what the long-term mission is, and that's bringing art and good art, real art, into our Las Vegas community. Absolutely. So, um, I, I, I wanted to just throw a light question. I have a few of them. I'm going to throw one in here just for the sake of, of fun. Um, you touched on the things that drew you to Las Vegas, okay? But really, what's a night out for fun like for you and your wife? What do you like to do for fun when you're not painting, when you're not doing interviews? What do you like to do for fun and relax? And don't tell me painting. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, uh, really, we like to go and uh, see the show. Okay. What's well, been your favorite show that you've seen so far? It was a show about uh, Elvis Presley. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, some other shows. I saw so many of them, I even not remember the names. <laughs> and uh, uh, we like to go in movies once in a while. Okay. Sitting in the backyard. You know, and which you have a beautiful view, by the way, of of the strip and, and all that Vegas has to offer. Well, yes, because uh, artists need that. Yeah, <laughs> it's your inspiration, right? It is. Yeah. It is. And uh, going to dinners, okay, twenty four seven. You know, doesn't matter what time you go because it's always happening. Uh, yeah, we are two people. We can well, go any time you want. Right. As we've learned from the European culture, be becoming friendly with both Perko and Jolay, right. you can eat late and it goes on and on and on. 